Hey guys, how's it going? My name is Pastor Landon and I wanna to talk to you about a very specific thing that bothers people, which is the small variations uh, between things Jesus said in between the four gospels. And I wanna to explain to you um, what I think about that. Hey, so thanks for joining me. If you're new to the channel or if you're not and you haven't done these things, I'd love it if you would like uh, this video, comment on it. Um, hit that subscribe button or the bell or whatever it is in the future. Share it if it's a blessing to you. There's a free Bible overview PDF um, in the description box below. And I've got a Bible study magazine that I'd love to share with you. Um, and that's print or digital in the box below, a brand new thing. Um, so often people get to this roadblock in their faith, which is um, with the Bible. Um, they love Jesus, they meet Jesus, they follow Jesus, they study the Bible, and there are paradoxes in the Bible that bother them, or the problem of evil bothers them, or small variations uh, of uh, the descriptions or um, quotations of Jesus really bother people. And I want to explain why, to me, um, that isn't an issue for a variety of reasons, and also, it's not just an issue to me, I don't think it's an issue in general at all. And I wanna to explain to you why with three things, but before I get to the three things, a precursor, we live in a hyper-literal quotation society. Um, the Bible was not passed down, you know, like campfire stories, and then eventually someone wrote it down. I think there's potential that some of the parts were, but the Holy Spirit, uh, took part in and was the primary author anyway. But we live in a hyper-literal society. Um, it's 2021, but I remember when Barack Obama was still the president and there was a quote on two different news networks and the article of the quote was different. It was like it said, it is or this is or something like that. And I was looking at it and I was thinking, neither of them are technically wrong because that isn't what the quote is actually about. Um, so we, we start off in this place that's hyper, hyper, hyper literal about quotations. Now, even still, I don't think it's a problem. And I want to explain to you why with three reasons. Here's the three reasons why I um, don't see any of these um, variations in the quotes of Jesus as a problem. Number one, the languages that they were written in. So you have to understand what the Gospels are. Number one, um, the Gospel of Matthew was written by Matthew. Some scholars think that Matthew was written in Aramaic. I believe that Jesus spoke out loud in Aramaic. Um, that I believe that's the main language that Jesus spoke in. There is not universal agreement on that, but from what I've read and from what I've studied, that's what I believe. And I believe Matthew wrote down um, in Aramaic. Mark, I believe, was written originally in Greek, but I don't believe it was written. I believe it was recorded. And from the way it sounds, I think that Mark was the, 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 the author Mark writing down what Peter said. And there's a lot of scholars that think that. Thirdly, I think Luke was written in Greek, written down by Luke the doctor. And then fourthly, um, the Gospel of John, I believe, was also written in Greek. But the Gospel of John contains almost no parallel material to the other three comparatively. You know, even a cursory study of the... Um, Gospels would show you that, which I'm sure many of you guys already know. So that's thing number one. I don't think that Jesus spoke Greek. I think that Jesus spoke Aramaic. So I think that all of the Gospels that we read are a translation of what Jesus said, which may be a bit disappointing because you're like, oh, I want to know exactly what Jesus said. Well, you do know exactly what Jesus said because the Holy Spirit led them to write it down. So that's thing number one is the difference between language. And then thing number two is oftentimes in the Gospels, people make events parallel that are not parallel. The biggest example of that is the Sermon on the Mount versus the Sermon on the Plain. In Matthew chapter 5 verse 7, Jesus preached the greatest sermon in the history of the world. It's called the Sermon on the Mount. He stood at the base of a mountain and he gave a sermon. Now the Gospel of Luke records a similar sermon, but there's a lot of variations. And so people are like, oh my gosh, like what was actually said? We'll go look at the text. It says uh, right before um, the, the sermon in Luke, it says that Jesus came and stood in, a, in a, a plain place. It's clearly a different time and a different sermon. But why would he preach the same sermon twice? Well, I've preached the same sermon 50 times. You know, I've preached sermons over and over and over again. I went on a bus tour with my dad. I heard my dad preach a sermon called Vertical Church 40 times. 
And they were very similar, but there were variations. Now, would you go to two of those sermons, print them out, uh, transcribe them or whatever, and then say, oh, well, this is, these are not accurate. No, you would recognize that they were different nights and he said different things. This is what happens in the Gospels. A lot of events that people make immediately parallel are not. They're actually different events and they're recording different things. Between those two things, um, the language and the non-parallel events, to me, that solves 99% of the discrepancies. And then any discrepancies that are left, I would chalk up to um, a scribe error. Um, that would be number three. And this would be less than 1% of all of the things. You know, scribes are humans like us. I believe that the Bible is inerrant, infallible, and inspired, but in its original form, not the Bible that I'm holding. I do believe the Bible I'm holding is inf inerrant and infallible. Um, but I do believe that there's been a, an amount of human transition between then that it, to me, is completely acceptable. I don't worship the Bible. I worship God. The Bible is the greatest work of art that the world has ever known. It is the, it, it says in the Psalms that the law of the Lord is perfect. That doesn't mean that if you copy down Psalm 19 on a piece of paper and hand it to your friend that that's perfect. And I think that we just have to allow for just a a tiny amount of space there. So for me, and I hope for you, between the languages that they were originally spoken and written in and um, the difference of parallel and non-parallel events and the potential for scribe error, to me, it's just a complete non-issue. And I hope that that, excuse me, I hope that that helps you because this was a problem for me for a long time and I actually started to have a distrust in the gospels and some of the things they wrote because of these. And if you're in that place, you don't need to listen to me. Pray to the Holy Spirit and ask him to show you. And I believe that if you do that with humility and if you wait, God will show you the same things and maybe not even for the same reasons. But I believe that God will lead you to that place. And I believe that he will use the dissonance and doubt in your heart to bring about something amazing. So that is why there are small variations in the Gospels as to the quotations of Jesus. I hope this has helped and blessed you. We can talk about it more below if you want. God bless and we'll see you soon. <music>